Oh jeez. I did a thing. What's up you guys? My name is Eric Moretten and thanks for coming and checking out today's video. Uh, today's kind of a special one and kind of a really uh, sentimental one for me anyways. Um, if you know me, and if you could probably tell from the title of this video, um, whatever it's going to be called, uh, yeah, I kind of just actually got my real holy grail guitar. You might have seen a video that I made around maybe this time last year, if not like February last year. I picked up a USA uh, Dean from Hell, uh, which was like the iconic Dimebag guitar. And yeah, that's one of my grail guitars, but I kind of found like the real, like cream of the crop, uh, the old grail guitar. So um, we're gonna get right into it. But first things first, you might have noticed on Instagram, like a little while back, I said like, oh, I had to get rid of my uh, 2001 uh, Korean or Chinese made uh, Washburn Dime Slime. Uh, I just sold it, um, you know, just to kind of make room for some other things. And when I bought that thing back in 2012, um, you know, not really having a job, just like fresh out of school and everything and being like, okay, um, this is what I can afford right now and hopefully one day down the road I can eventually get a slime, like a USA one. And lo and behold, almost 12 or almost 10 years later, uh, because I got this thing as an early Christmas gift before um, even filming this, and 10 years later roughly I managed to score a All-American Washburn slime. And I'm going to show you what's even more special about it. So. Let's take a peek at this old sucker right here. So here we go. This is my real holy grail guitar that I honestly can't believe I'm even holding right now. So there's a headstock, it's all beautiful and everything. And it just so happens that it's actually signed by Pantera, which is, uh, I don't know. I'm at a loss for words about this whole thing. Like trying to find these things and you know, for how rare they are, and you know, maybe for some of the prices that they're kind of going for, and maybe for, you know, honestly just being able to find one of these things and get it to your door, especially here in Canada, they're not really common at all, let alone in general. Um, yeah, I can't believe I found my favorite finish, that was, that was a production run finish. It's also signed by the band, and it's dead mint. Uh, yeah, we kind of hit a lot of boxes there, and yeah. So today we're gonna I'm gonna walk you through it. We're gonna hear it, and then I'm gonna maybe chat about it for a minute or two, and then we'll be out of here. So let's get right into things. All right, so here it is. This is the this is my 1999 USA Washburn D3 Dime Slime, which is still can't believe I have this thing. Um, yeah, let's go over the specs real fast. Uh, this is an all mahogany guitar, mahogany body, mahogany neck. And it has a big old volute here. I think that was just common for, uh, for what Dimebag wanted or maybe how the design was. I'm not 100% sure. Um, this also has a rosewood fingerboard, which is a beautiful piece of rosewood here. Uh, nickel frets, because you know back then stainless steel wasn't really the thing on guitars for frets. Uh, we got black hardware, Grover, 18 to 1 ratio tuners. We have the Buzz Phaeton uh, tuning system on the guitar, which you know, I've heard is just, you know, it's a name. I don't know if it really does much. What I can say is that this guitar holds its tune very well for its age and for, you know, for having a Floyd Rose, and we'll get to that right now. We have a German Schaller licensed Floyd Rose. You know, that's exactly what Dimebag had on his. We got the Bill Lawrence XL500 pickup in the bridge, which is also a gray wire and a Seymour Duncan 59 bridge in the neck position just to keep things a little bit more politically correct if you're going after the Dimebag aesthetic and the Dimebag sound. And we got this beautiful two-piece flame maple top that has you know, been painted by none other than Chewy, you know, who painted all of Dimebag's guitars, and this one as well. And yeah, he was kind of the guy that you know created this uh, scheme next to Dime, or at least brought it to life, you know, because initially this was called like a snot burst, which was, Dime was kind of hoping for and you know like a yellow and green scheme and I don't know and then just kind of turn into more of like a slime less of a like a snot and there's different variations of the slime guitar itself there's um, the this one here you know this is the flame top model has a piece of flame maple that's a uh, veneered on top a real flame maple that is not an actual like veneer or whatever and there's also these other ones that are called a lame top which is still a piece of maple on top but there's no figuring at all and that one is still finished like the slime as well. 
And from what I heard, these are the more um, sought after ones from the production run. You know, the ones you can actually like get off the shelf, if you will. Like sure, there is like some rare ones, you know, like the Blood Bolts, uh, the Infernos, and like the Plates, for example. But those ones were done in like extremely limited numbers, whereas this one, like from the mid 90s to the late 90s and even early 2000s, you can walk into a music store and if they had it on the shelf, like, cool, you can go and pick it up. Whereas the other ones were kind of like a call in only uh, if you wanted to buy them at the time. Which then brings me to this, because I've also heard that after like 2000 and maybe 2001, roughly right after Pantera broke up, this finish was actually pulled from production, like the actual slime finish. Now, the only way you could get the slime finish is if you actually phoned Washburn from your local dealer and said, hey, I want like a USA Dime Slime custom shop, and that's the only way you can get it because there are later models of the slime where guys have said, yeah, mine's a custom shop model and it actually has the Washburn USA custom shop on it. So I don't know what went on there. I mean, if there's someone from Washburn or maybe if Chewy's watching this or someone is watching this and knows why, feel free to comment below. That would be fantastic because I think that makes these slime models just a little bit more rare. And getting back to the whole like how to find one of these things, like uh, if you're in like all the dime bag groups and everything, if you're looking on eBay and reverb for these things, like you'll notice that there's been a lot of like other models pop up, like there's blackjacks and bolts, those are the common ones from these production ones. Then out of nowhere it seemed like there was a bunch of like Southern Crosses that popped up and there's only a hundred of those, if not maybe like 90 something of those that were actually made. Whereas there was like no slimes actually available for the longest time and this one popped up and you know, hemmed and hawed and you know, made a couple moves and then managed to get one of these things and that's kind of how you have to go about it if you really want one of these things, right? So yeah, um, that's kind of the whole thing, you know, just to, even though I'm probably kind of rambling at this point about all the, how freaking cool this thing is. So we're going to get to playing this thing in just a second and I'm going to, yeah, let's just get playing. I'm going to stop talking. This thing's too cool. Here we go. This is the 1999 D3 tuned to C sharp standard 450 hertz as Dime had it or D standard 430, 429, whatever your fancy is. Going into the rev generator 120 on the red channel. Got the uh, bright switch engaged. We got the blue aggression on and we're going to a cap sim I've created in the Omega suite from Neural DSP. So I'm just gonna riff around, maybe play a couple leads and maybe cleans. I don't know, you guys probably don't wanna hear cleans. Here we go, let's just get to riffing. <laughs> there it gets you to the tone pretty good like Bill Lawrence in the bridge and even with a modern tube head and cab IRs like you're in the realm it's it's pretty crazy <laughs>
a couple lead tones coming at you. Um, gonna play as conservatively as I can, you know, I can't really dig in as much or have as much fun as I would like to on this guitar, but all for a good cause. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> So that kind of wraps up this whole uh, little intro walk through to the my beautiful 99 uh, Dime Slime that is also signed by the boys in Pantera, which I still can't believe. Um, this go this go also goes without saying, like you know, I didn't find this thing on my own. There's been a lot of people who have been helping me throughout the years of trying to find one of these things. So first and foremost, uh, Chris, thank you for selling me this guitar. If you're if you're watching this video. Um, Andrew, you know, and for helping me get connected with Chris at the end of the day and helping uh, facilitate a few different things. Um, you know, my buddy Brandon in Texas, um, great dude. He's helping me look high and low as well. My buddy Joe in England, you know, like, thank you guys so much. Like, there's, if you're looking for these things, you gotta look all over the place. Like, some of my buddies that I know, like, they've gone like high and low to find these guitars, you know, and you help a buddy out, like, hey, if, you know, you know a guy that's selling one, like, I'll go pick it up, then I'll go ship it out to you, you know, knowing that it's in good hands, things like that. Or, oh, I can help you, I know a guy who knows a guy, things like that, right? Um, it all comes down to how bad you want these things, and if you're in a place to obviously do it, um, you know, you know, and that's what it is at the end of the day, right? It's like, you know, and if when these things pop up, sometimes they go, sometimes they sit for a bit and they get pulled down, and sometimes if you just ask the right guy, hey, they still have it, and they're just looking for the right seller and the right buyer at the end of the day. So, very fortunate that I'm able to actually hold this thing and actually have it in my collection. So, yeah, thanks again, guys, for making this whole thing happen. Um, if you are interested in anything else that I do, like Pantera related or anything aside from Pantera, I've got a ton of videos on my YouTube channel as well, walking through gear and doing some covers and originals and everything like that. Um, if you're into the Pantera stuff that I do, i got a full playlist of Pantera songs that I've done and like other dime bag guitar videos that I've done as well. Um, I'm also going to link below to all of my social media profiles and all the bands that I'm in. Um, which are the vilification and sleep terror you can go check out all the original music that we have done so far and you know that is to come because we both fans have new music that is coming hopefully soon just got to wait for a couple different things to pan out first and otherwise if you got a crazy dime bag guitar story like this or if you are just like stoked that you have a dime bag guitar like in general doesn't even have to be a usa washburn and that you just want to share and like say that you have it cool would love to hear it would love to hear about any other crazy dime bag story that you have because I mean he's impacted all of us in one way or another and I think it's just our part of just keeping the man's legacy alive as as uh, as we go forward so yeah if you like this consider subscribing give a thumbs up leave a comment we'd love to hear from you and with that being said I will see you in the next video thanks again for watching and take her easy